Hey guys, welcome back to Concordia Jedi for another Cassius Q&A. And uh, we got a lot of questions this time, so we're just going to dive right into it. From Jordan Cox. Hello, Concordia Jedi. I have three questions for you. Are there any characters in the Cassius universe who you feel could you could have done more with? Uh, I don't know. There's a couple of characters that I think I probably could have done a little bit more with. Uh, I feel... Uh, Minister Tanbin, I maybe could have fleshed his character out a little bit more. Uh, and characters like Zaturi, Toza, who, you know, like the Arabella crew, they show up, uh, you know, throughout the books uh, at different points. But it might have been cool to, you know, kind of cross-cut uh, back and forth between Cassius and Liara and go to the crew of the Arabella, see what they're up to. Uh, but for the most part, I'm pretty satisfied with how I developed most of the characters. Two, do you have any future plans for any of the other side characters, uh, or for, for any of the other side characters to have their own book series? At the moment, no, but I do have some ideas uh, brewing around in my head for a, a trilogy following Liara after the events of Jedi Redeemed. If both Cassius and Liara had reached their full potential, who do you think would win? Well, if they fought each other, I'm still going to give the slight edge to Cassius just for the fact that he has a little bit more experience and that he trained her. Though Liara at her full uh, at her full potential, I'd have to think about that because I don't know if I ever really went into detail on what her full potential would be like. So there's a chance she could win. Thank you very much for your questions. Uh, from Leo Romer. If you had to think about Cassius Urshan's parents, which of them do you think Cassius resembles the most in terms of physical appearance and personality? I think in physical appearance, he probably takes, uh, he probably takes after his mom in, uh, in a lot of ways. I imagine his mom probably had the brown hair and the blue eyes. Uh, probably some facial features from his dad, though. Uh, in terms of personality, it's hard to say because your personality is shaped uh, mostly from uh, how you're raised. And Cassius was raised among the Jedi. So I don't know if he really would take after his parents in terms of their personality. Thank you for your questions. From Midnight, I have four questions for you. Okay. Number one, other than telling them like an audiobook, what other format or formats would you prefer the series to be adapted to? I've said that if I had the time and the money, I would love to have the Book of Cassius made into an animated series. Uh, the problem is that is insanely expensive, very time consuming, and would take more than just myself to get off the ground. Number two, if you had to change something about Cassius, what would it be? I don't know. There's a couple things that I would like to tweak about the character. Nothing I'd really change overtly. If I had to change anything about Cassius, I'd maybe give him a little bit more of a more of an edge in the earlier books. Not like like Shadow the Hedgehog levels of edge, but like show that there is a little bit of like a darker side deep inside of him that we see come out during the later books. Like, kind of tease that anger that we see in him when it comes to Inner Storm. But on the other hand, I think it really works well showing that he was a very kind, good-hearted person, and then the events of Order 66 really took a toll on him. And number three, in the Cassius Legends, where the ending is different, do you think Liara would be friends with any of the students at the Academy? Uh, at, I imagine at Luke's Jedi Academy, you mean? Or do you think some of them would be jealous that she's learned from a Clone Wars veteran? I think she'd mostly get along pretty well with uh, everyone else. She'd probably be one of the older students there, uh, you know, having been born during the Clone Wars. Um, yeah, I think she'd, she'd get along mostly well with most of the other students. Uh, Liara is a pretty easygoing person, uh, very likable in a lot of ways. Number four, if Cassius met old Obi-Wan Kenobi, how would it go down? I'd have to think about that because if it's after Order 66, uh, there wasn't really, there was a point where Cassius was told, like, maybe you, go, maybe you could go to Tatooine to train Liara, but he shut that down saying that it's a hive of bounty hunters and scumbags. 
Uh, if they had gone to Tatooine to train, there's a chance he could have met Obi-Wan there. Uh, but given that the events of uh, around this time period take place around the same time period as the Kenobi show, uh, Obi-Wan wouldn't be too old. So if we're talking like him meeting like old Ben Kenobi, it would have to be closer to the events of Jedi Redeemed. And during that time, I just, I just can't see it happening. Uh, it's interesting to think about, though. Thank you for your questions. From Milkman McGee. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but do you have plans for an Old Republic story where the lead character is an ancestor of Cassius? And if it's still in the works, what are going to be some of the differences and similarities between him and Cassius in both personality and the relationship with the Force? Other than that, keep up the amazing content as usual. Thank you very much. Uh, I do have plans for Star Wars Lineage, I believe I call, I'm call i calling it, uh, which will follow an ancestor of Cassius Urshan named Galleon Urshan. Uh, I don't want to give too much away, uh, not only because this is still in very, very early development and may not come out until either later this year or possibly 2025. So I don't want to dive too much into something that's still very much in the works. Thank you for your question. From Diamond360. Hello there, my good sir. I deliver my questions to you. I receive them. One, of all nine Cassius books, which one would you say is the most underrated among the fans who have listened to them? Uh, I, st I still hold the opinion that I think Ashes of the Order, at least from the biased perspective of the writer, I feel like that's probably the most underrated in the series. Because I feel like, even though it, it drags a bit at times, I feel I had some of my strongest voice acting there. Not only for myself, but also uh, Dan Clanton, who provided the voice of uh, Locke Tambin, did a phenomenal job. I feel it has some of the darkest moments in the series, and also just some of my favorite moments in general. Uh, I can see why it, it might not be some people's cup of tea, but I, if you were to ask me which one I feel is probably the most underrated in the series, I would say either Ashes of the Order or Jedi Exile. Uh, number two, with the release of Takai beginning the first spin-off story of Cassius, which other characters could potentially be up for a spin-off in the future? Uh, like I said, currently the one that I have ideas for, but I'm not sure just yet 100% if I'll do it, is Liara. Uh, and that's mainly because I'm still kind of trying to come up with a good angle for it, and if I can't, it may be better to just leave the story as is for Liara. Number three. During a replay of Jedi Survivor, I started looking at the different ways of fighting the Empire between our two Jedi protagonists, Cal Kestis and Ser Junda. Cal going all out in an extremist guerrilla warfare against the Empire, and Ser taking a back seat and rebuilding a secret path and a new archive in the shadows. Looking at all of the main Cassius Jedi characters, where do you think each would fit into the two ideal paths, i.e. Cassius, Takai, Corbin, Sarah, Gaidom, Dravok, Liara, Dumlifa? Elon Elkin, if the latter two don't give spoilers. Uh, just for the sake of time, I'll probably just cover, you know, the uh, the main couple. Uh, Cassius, Corbin, Sarah, Takai, and Dravok. Uh, and I guess Liara too. Cassius, I feel it's very 50-50. Uh, but I'd say during the time of you know, when Jedi Survivor takes place... Cassius is still very much of the opinion that he would rather stay and hide, survive, rather than try to outright fight the Empire. So I feel like he would be more on Seer's side. Sarah, I could definitely see taking Cal's side and wanting to fight back. Same with Corbin. Takai, I also feel, would be more in, aligned with Seer in wanting to stay back and uh, help rebuild the archives and staying on a secret path in the shadows. Dravok, I could see going 50-50. Uh, I don't think he would want to out himself by going directly to the Empire, but I also don't know if he'd be 100% on board just sitting around doing nothing. And Liara, I feel, would definitely be more aligned with Cal. Liara was the one who always wanted to do more to help push and fight back against the Empire. Thank you for your question. From Zachary Wagster. All right, I have three questions for you this time. Number one, if you sat down with Disney and you had to pitch the book of Cassius to them, how would you do it? That's a tough one because I've never really done an official story pitch to anyone. I would 
I would probably be, you know, as straight to the point as I can, uh, and I tell them I have nine full books that can be adapted either to official books or to comics or to an animated series or to movies or whatever you think would work best. I would tell them about the characters. I would tell them that Sarah was adapted from Revenge of the Sith. I would go into detail about why I feel that this story should be made. Uh, let's say, hypothetically, your pitch succeeded and Cassius was going to be made into a TV series. The producers come to you and say they want to keep all the Cassius characters, but they want to drastically change the story to the point where there is almost nothing recognizable from what you wrote in the series. Would you allow this to happen? Why or why not? So anytime an adaptation is being made, things have to be changed uh, from from book to visual media. It, it's just it's just the way things work. Uh, it depends on do the characters' personalities and backstories stay the same, or is absolutely everything about the story changed to the point where it's it's just characters I made and not even the story. If it's the latter, I would definitely say no and would probably back out of the project and say that if you're not going to adapt my story, then don't adapt my characters. That uh, Now, if they were saying we want to change a couple things, mainly for the sake of pacing or for consistency or whatever, I would definitely sit down, talk with them, see what they want to change and if I feel that the change is warranted. And finally, what if Harris and Dula met Cassius instead of Kanan Jarrus? How do you think this would affect Star Wars Rebels? Would, Ca would Cassius meet and train Ezra Bridger? What would the relationships between the Ghost Crew and Cassius be like? That's a tough one. Uh, I don't know that Hera and Cassius would get romantically involved like uh, like Kanan and, Her and Hera did, but there's a possibility. Uh, in that sense, the whole thing with Jason Sindula would probably turn out very differently. Uh, I, I, I don't know how active Cassius would be with the Rebellion had he met Hera. Because remember, Cassius was very hesitant about joining the Rebellion or aiding them in the first place. So it's a matter of if he joins with Hera, does that mean he's a part of the Ghost crew and he goes with them on all these? Or does he convince Hera to take more of a backseat role, not get actively involved? If that's the case, then the Ghost crew may not even come to being. Or Hera might just say, look, if you're not going to help, I'm, I'm going to go help and find people who are willing to. So it's, it's kind of up in the air as to what would happen. Thank you for your question. From Ultra Shadow 95. Oh, that is a lot of questions. Uh, I might just have to pick and choose here uh, just for the sake of time. Unless I'll, I'll do a rapid fire. See how fast I can answer these. Hey, dude, I've got a couple of questions for you today. So here goes. One, what made you choose Sarah as the love interest for Cassius? Uh, like I said, Sarah was a character from the Revenge of the Sith video game. And I really liked her design. I liked, you know, her attitude. And we just didn't see very much of her. She never got a full story, and I decided let's work her into the story. I need a character alongside Cassius who would serve as not only a great friend, but also a potential love interest. And I figured Sarah would fit the mold well. Number two, if Cassius cast oh, if the Cassius cast were in Pokemon, which of the nine regions do you think they'd be from? And which starter would they choose? I'm not too familiar on the differences with, you know, all the different regions, Johto, Hoenn, all that stuff. Uh, but I can definitely tell you, like, Cassius definitely s starts with Bulbasaur. Sarah would definitely go for Charmander, and Corbin would go for Squirtle. Uh, so hopefully that answers that. Number three, who do you think would win in a three-way fight between Cassius, Sarah, and Corbin, and why? It depends on when this is taking place. If this is around the time of the Clone Wars, I would say that Corbin comes out on top. Uh, I th I just think he was more of a prodigy than, than Cassius was, and in terms of skill, just barely eked out Sarah. So hopefully that answers that. Number four, how do you think things would play out for Cassius in a universe where Qui-Gon survived to train Anakin while Obi-Wan was still knighted and went on to train Cassius instead of Takai? Uh... 
I think Cassius would lose a lot of like the personality that kind of made him who he was in the Cassius books because a lot of that was based on how he was trained by Takai and that really shaped a lot of his personality. He'd probably be a little bit more by the books if he were trained by Obi-Wan. Uh, he would definitely become an absolute monster with uh, Form 3 Sarisu. Uh, although I guess Obi-Wan technically only took up Sarisu after Qui-Gon died, but uh, it's neither here nor there. Uh, I don't know. I think he'd be a good apprentice for Obi-Wan, and I think they'd, they'd have a very good back and forth, but a very civil master and Padawan back and forth, not to the close extent that Cassius had with Master Takai. Number five. What would you say is the favorite video game uh, for each member of the Cassius cast? Uh, just for time, I think I'll have to skip this one. I'll, I'll, I might come back to that in, a, in another Q&A, just for the sake of time, sorry. Number six. Have you ever thought of making a short series called Cassius Abridged, similar to DBZ Abridged? Uh, it's crossed my mind from time to time. I just don't know if there's a, a real audience for it. So, uh, thank you for your questions. From 212th Trooper, if Cassius ran for Chancellor of the New Republic in Cassius Legends, let's say he won because he saw how the Republic fell and fought against the Empire, thus earning the trust, admiration, and respect of the people, what policies would he enact, and how would he generally go about running the New Republic? <laughs> oh no, I'm not brave enough for politics. Uh, I think he would want to put in more security measures in, in regards to politicians in office. So much of what Palpatine did was hidden in the shadows. And knowing how Palpatine was able to accomplish all that, in hindsight, he would want to make sure that there were there were more surveillance protocol. Not exactly like spying, but making sure that any, any order or executive decision that was put forward by the people in charge would definitely be looked into. And they would ask, okay, why is he doing this? What... What motives does he have for this? I think that would be the main one he would run, or the, the main policy he would want to enact. And also giving more power to the people regardless of whether they're in the Republic or not. If you're a system that's independent or whatever, but you still are requiring help from the Republic, then the Republic should answer. Uh, who is more powerful, Ursius Cashon or Bully Urshan? Bully Urshan, he's going to put some dirt in your eye. Uh, from Nolan Ueno, what if Cassius died, but Sarah, Corbin, and Takai survived Order 66? How do you think events would play out differently? For example, would they join Dravok's plan to assassinate Vader? That's a tough one, but I think that Corbin and Sarah would most likely stay with Master Takai and stick around her, you know, kind of keeping together in a tight-knit group, and they'd probably go into hiding somewhere. Takai would be absolutely devastated. All three of them would be at the fact that Cassius was gone, but I think no one more than Master Takai. Uh, and it's difficult to say whether they'd join with Dravok. I think that Sarah and Corbin might, but, but Takai would be more on the fence about the situation. Number two, in a past Q&A, you said you think Liara and Ellie from The Last of Us would get along, but can you please be more specific what you think their interaction would be like? Personally, I think Liara might not like Ellie cursing a lot and her more hostile attitude. I think Liara and Ellie would get off to a rocky start. I think Liara, being the more hopeful, youthful, optimistic uh, one of the two, would find her a bit grating and off-putting and... I think she'd be a bit distrustful of her seeing how she goes to certain extremes after a while. But I think eventually they'd, they'd start to get off on the right foot with each other. What crazy tales will there be about Cassius when people talk about him in the cantina during the New Republic era? That's a tough one to say because most of what Cassius did during the story uh, was done in secret or was stuff that would most likely been forgotten about later on you know his fights with vader would have never got really gotten out to the public uh a lot of his work with the rebellion was done in secret i think if anyone talked about cassius it would be mainly people that knew cassius so hopefully that answers that question 
From Brandon Aylman, out of all the Cassius books you wrote, which one was your favorite? Mine was Jedi Master, and my other favorite was Jedi Redeemed, the last book. Thank you for your question. My favorite uh, Cassius book has got to be Jedi Exile, because I re that was the first time I really got to dive into the mindset of Cassius and really build up this broken character and see where does he go from here now that he's at rock bottom and has lost absolutely everything. I loved the characters that I wrote, Sabo, Kala, uh, Shara, and that was the first book where, outside of a cameo from Vader, I didn't have to rely on any real pre-established characters for the bulk of the book. I was able to tell a story of my own characters that I wrote interacting off each other and telling this whole story without any real reliance from established characters outside of, you know, like I said, cameos from Vader and Nomi Sunrider. So I was very proud of that. So that would be my favorite still. Thank you. And that'll about wrap it up for this Cassius Q&A. Thank you all so much for your questions. Uh, we'll see you very soon with some more content. Take care.